right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Daniel Cooper, who is all the way over in the UK in Cambridge, a lovely part of, uh, of the UK. If you ever get a chance to visit, I highly recommend it. How are you doing, Daniel? Very, very well. Thanks, John. It's a, a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, Daniel is the managing director of Lolly. Uh, and this is, uh, you help companies automate and scale with digital transformation. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So first off, um, Daniel, a lot of people talk about digital transformation. And you know, there's been a lot, there's been a lot written about and spoke about it. But uh, I do feel that certainly even before the pandemic, there was a lot of lip service being paid to the idea of digital transformation. And then we had the pandemic. And I think a lot of companies discovered to their detriment that paying lip service <laughs> came back to bite them. So uh, number one, when you talk about digital transformation, just kind of bottom line it for people. Sure. Yeah. So when we look at digital transformation, we're looking at a couple of pillars, really. We're looking at what's happening internally in the business mm -hmm. and, and how that can be digitized and how that can be improved with technology. Uh, and also what's happening outside of the business with our own customers or would-be customers uh, and how can we digitize and improve that process of, of seeing that type of thing happen. It's a very, very simple explanation of it, really. Digital transformation is quite a very corporate word, isn't it? It's one of those words where, yeah. or one of those sayings which doesn't really kind of converse what it actually is. But as far as I'm concerned and the way that we look at it, it it's... It's about finding processes um, that can now actually look to be automated uh, and improved to free people up to get back to doing what they're good at, you know, being human, not machines. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting because I think that's one of the things that people get a little leery about uh, when they when they hear digital transformation and then they hear automation, they start to think, oh, am I going to be automated out of a job? But as you say, uh, probably the best place to start with digital process is looking at all those, you know, maybe if you start internally, even all those routine, mundane, repetitive tasks that actually free you up then to, to do more high value activities. Yeah, right. And, and I, th I think a, a good example of that is when we look at your, your company is a, is, a, is a CRM company. So it's a, yep. it's a CRM that's based around salespeople and trying to mm -hmm. really, you know, hand the power back to them and it's a good example of where things can be automated so a great example of this is for instance a lead will come into us and tip and it happens with most companies with leads Ooh, we get leads come in and the point of these leads really is that, that often they're limited so we'll see uh, a name an email a phone number maybe a company name um and really what we look to do is we we really help people um automate things where I like, for example, enriching that. So there's external services, APIs that can enrich data where you can send them the email of your new contact and it can send you back huge amounts of data. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we do that and automate that and directly throw that into a CRM like yours uh, without us having to go there and add that and hunt for that data. And it's that type of thing that allows people to get back to doing what they, they want to do. So allows a salesperson to get back to selling rather than researching. No, absolutely. So when you, uh, when you engage with companies, um, how do you start the process? Like, how do you help them figure out what it is they should automate and, and what they should, uh, what they should transfer form? Because I always feel that that's, yeah. it, it's, 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 it's like anything. I think people often struggle with where to put their first foot. Yeah. It's, it, Typically, it depends, you know, on, on the size of the company. But I think if you ask anyone in a management position where the problems are, they instantly know where the fires are and, and or, what they're desperate to unpick themselves from. You know, as I'm saying this, you're probably thinking of something. You think, I wish I could automate this. And anyone else listening is, is, is thinking the same thing. Um, but we, we look at a couple of areas. So the, the way that we tend to do it is I'm a big believer that automation should be led by people. I think that if, if we come in, let's say there's a company and we come in and we just speak to the upper management and decide with just the upper management what will be automated and just tell everyone 
but you'll have a you'll have an uprising on your hands because it's mm. just not what people want. So we actually workshop it and we map all of the processes with people, the actual people who the actual boots on the ground, and work with them to optimize the, the these processes uh, and look to how we can automate. So we'll be teaching them personal automate, you know, how to automate things personally, whether that's with services like IFTTT or Zapier, which you can do mm. some fun automation things for yourself with. Um, and then getting them to kind of work with us to discover the answer and what can be automated. And that's the place that we start. And, and we look to really um, time box things. So how long will it take me as a person to, when a lead comes in, go out and look up every single piece of information versus how long will it actually take us if we just spend the money to automate that and get code to do it, right? And it's that type of thing we do. So it all pivots off of these workshops with people with post-it mm -hmm. notes and, and actual fun that we and, go to. And, and when you do this workshopping, I, I, um, often how surprised are, are people sometimes by the amount of time and the amount of rote tasks or even repetitive or even overlapping stuff that they mm. end up doing? Because let's face it, we don't really analyze our jobs as we do them. Uh, it's not until you go into a situation, like you say, with your workshopping, that when you take a step back, um, it's probably quite surprising. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's there's a few things that you see there. I mean, people are often shocked at how long they spend on a process. When you add the numbers up over a year, yeah. and you say to someone, "Look, Dave, you're spending <laughs> ten days a year doing this one thing. Do you really want to live like that?" Uh, people are also often surprised on why they do things. I've I've been in a workshop before where someone receives a payment in this was a this was a, a, a bookkeeping club they received a payment in they'd enter into a spreadsheet they print it off they print off the email and then walk it upstairs someone else sent a spreadsheet and when i asked them why they said oh i don't know i just i've just always done it this way and then you said well why don't you just fill out the spreadsheet the other person was oh yes why aren't we doing it? you know there's a lot of that that happens and and you also see what we call um normalization deviance and, and that is when you have this really weird psychological effect that starts to take place where if you and I and two other people do exactly the same role and one of us does something, a slight deviation to the norm, but somehow imprints that on the others, it, everyone starts to do it and we don't really know why and we're all wandering away. Um, and that, that, that is very common. Um, and, and management will be thinking that people do things one way. When they actually look at it, it's completely different. And, and it can be a, a complete mix of all of those things. Um, but it's only really when you put it up on a, on a big wall with all these post-its and time the bits that everyone goes, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah. No, I was I was fortunate a number of years ago. I did uh, I did a lean office um, course up at the University of Michigan, and that was uh, that was the most surprising part is when you do put the post-it notes up but you time everything because people think oh uh yeah i get the lead in and i i and and then i send it over to daniel and say oh, how long does that take well it takes me a minute to send it to daniel how long does it take daniel to process it well it takes him two minutes and you go well hang, hang on a second does daniel do it immediately well no yeah. he might get to it he might get he gets to it maybe you know a half a day later or like hours later okay so okay so it doesn't take two minutes it takes two hours and two minutes yeah 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 <laughs> that's very common um, and i think as well you know people don't really think about this black box they're passing things into yeah, right exactly you know, if you look at a process of just one thing that you do sometimes the pro is coming from somewhere else so there's a, a black box somewhere in the cloud where something's coming from and another black box where you're feeding it to and, and often we're not getting enough information from the original source, sometimes too much. And again, when we're sending it somewhere else, we won't be giving someone else too much or too little. So it's about really pulling all that apart. And, and it's interesting you said at the beginning there about you know digital transformation, even the the the, the phrase itself. Uh, and I do, and I agree with you because I do think when you say digital transformation, like people nod in agreement, but their eyes glaze over a little bit yeah. um, because it sounds like it's extremely complex what's happening but the reality is that there's a lot of i mean you even mentioned um, zaps with zapier earlier or whatever mm. there's a lot of things that are not that complicated to do so it's more accessible i think than people think yeah i think that the, 
not everything is really, really complicated and every process is different. So there are some things that, that I mean, being an, a company that specializes in automation, there are many, many parts of my job that I've automated or I have bits of code that I can just click a button and something happens. Now, some of those require really complex automation and some are ever so simple. Um, you know, whether or not it's turning on my office heater from my bedroom early in the morning when it's cold, that's actually something that's quite simple. I've bought a smart plug and, and hooked it up to IFTTT, nice and easy, right? And I, that, that's fun. But there are more complex stuff that we do where we're trying to enrich leads and we're trying to keep control of all our projects and, and automatically move things. So, yeah, I, I think that it's all about breaking things right down in, in software development there's a couple of terms. One is waterfall development uh, and one is agile. And we, we were taught in software development that if you do things in a waterfall, waterfall technique, that's where you will spend years and years and years and years working on something to release it later yeah. on. And you just dump it into the market. Now, often the market's changed or your business in this case has changed from where you started the automation. And you'll end up with the automation equivalent of Windows 8, which nobody likes. We've all agreed. No one liked it. And that was waterfall technique. Whilst yeah. if we're doing agile, we're choosing small pieces. We're making life a bit easier every single day by automating something small. Let's take all the hard stuff and let's just push that down the road and let's concentrate on the stuff that actually is just a slight annoyance, like coming into your office in the morning and it's freezing cold for the first hour. Well, let's quickly automate that one. It's that type of stuff that I think is the right way to go, John. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Daniel. I think that, and I think that's a great point and a great point for people to take on board because, yeah, when we often when we start to look at something like automation or digital transformation, we get carried away and we we go for the big, oh, let's you know, do this big, big project. And as you say, yeah, it's great. It takes you 10 years. And by that time, like your competitor down the road has got robots doing everything or whatever. But mm. but I think I think part of the part of the the problem too is that idea of um, you know speed versus you know um, complexity, and I think there, there's a great argument for as you said getting simple things done quickly and then seeing the benefit because the other thing is I mean as you work with companies you got to get the buy-in of people so they've got to see immediate benefit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's that that is really key and. And I know that automation does delight people when when you deliver on it. Um, and, and I think it's addictive in many, many ways. And and that's part that's why in our workshop that, you know, a piece of and it's we do it every two weeks. So when we first discovering these processes, part of the homework for everyone in that workshop group, four or five of them, is to go home and when I see you next week, I want to see what you've managed to automate in your own life. Mm -hmm. You know, to something fun and simple. And I think then instantly it switches people's minds onto actually what is possible um, and, and how uh, liberating it, it can actually be. I think that's, that's the way they need to start. Yeah. And then obviously, like you said, is, I mean, you have to you have to take a good hard look at your processes as well, because, I mean, if you have mm -hmm. crappy processes, there's no point in automating because then you just get automated crappy processes. Yeah, and you need to look at the speed on things as well. I mean, if you, sales is a really good example of this. We have a we we use a CRM and and, and we integrate with it and, and do lots of different things with um, um with, with the API available and, and other services. And and one of the most irritating things to me that every time we needed to send an NDA to a client because it's important we have mutual NDAs in place. Yep. Um, you know, we'll go to the grave of our client secrets. I like to say, but the point of it is that you we'd say, right, you know, let's do some business. I'll send you an NDA. Well, now I have to come out of the CRM. I now have to go into whatever thing we're sending, if it's DocuSign or eSign or PandaDoc, go in, find the template, copy it, add the person's to, and it, it's just a pain, a massive pain to do. And you spend 20 minutes sending an NDA. So that type of thing, we said, right, well, let's just make something where you just put the person's ID in from the CRM, press enter, and and it's gone because we've got the data in the CRM. Why can't we just automate it coming out? And it's it's those types of processes um, that that are 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 great to do where there's really no there's no grey area, right? Yeah. Send it and or you don't. No, yeah, and there's no benefit to it being done manually. None. I mean, it's a template you had anyway. I mean, we all know that when we're sending typically contracts or when we're getting people to sign things. On, you know on the dotted line for sales there's 
there's really like a templated system they're using and that's really common in sales um yeah there may be a, a few small bits that change but really i'd argue that those small um parameters that are changing for the deal those should be in your crm anyway mm -hmm. and if they're not you're not using your crm properly yeah so 100%. we can pull all that data out which is which is fantastic and there are obviously some crms do automatically connect to other um other kind of external services i know yours does uh, and mm -hmm. i know you've obviously got an api as well so it's a it's a massive benefit and and it, it's really worth people looking into yeah, and uh, um, and with our system, as we were saying before, I mean, we have a no uh, a no code uh, automation mm. workflow engine. But as part of that, is you can create automatic processes that kick off automatically. But you can also create automated processes that um, that a user or salesperson can kick off manually. So to your point, if you were having a conversation with somebody and you said, "Oh, I need an NDA," you just hit the NDA process because it's not something that should be automated all the time because you're not always sending an NDA. So you're making, so you're, right. you're using both, you're using automation, but you're also still giving uh, the choice to the person when they want to kick that off. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, if you just send one, just sending out one of those NDAs manually every day, if it's 20 minutes or half an hour, well, that's, that's really three decent phone calls, three decent conversations with, you know, another, three customers and, and we know that if we're not speaking to potential clients as soon as possible then they're just getting colder and colder as each day passes um so it, it, it is really worth doing that in, in sales mm -hmm. there, there is you know this internal operational stuff there's almost limitless kind of opportunities for this type of automation that, that can be done and we see companies where they have very simple things that need to be automated and other companies where it's extremely complex so a, a good example of that is uh, we have a very large accounting company um, and I didn't realize and perhaps in naively that one of the hardest things accounts have to do is they have to chase up documents from their own customers. So we all know that our accountants will, will chase us for everything. Well, I need the books or, you know, what's happening with your tax return. We don't really mm -hmm. think that they're doing that for this client in, in, in conversation. 20,000 times over. Um, so is that type of automation is really important. Uh, and also filing of documents to, you know, the, the, the actual um, government agencies, it was a really, really big part of it. But that was super complex stuff trying to integrate with, in the UK, it's called HMRC and, and Companies House, I'm trying to integrate with their government APIs, which as you can imagine are reliable, uh built by committee uh, yeah yeah it was it was actually to the point where i mean we, we got to work then and the guy guy such an email when when you send us the data i mean normally when you do an api you send the data and the machine yeah. sends it straight back and you know if there's a if it's good you know if there's a problem and the guy said just on email when you send the data give me a call on the phone i'll let you know if we got it <laughs> so there was a lot of that but yeah. it works on the list yeah, no, that's 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 funny. So, um, so Daniel, just uh, get at your crystal ball for a second and tell me where do you think where do you think we're going in in the short to medium term and in the long term with with digital transformation? Um, I think that we are likely to start seeing um, a lot more process mining come into come into play now. I mean the 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 art of automation we're all aware of but process mining to actually dig out from your machine itself um the exact process you're undertaking and then the computer then take that over i think that's gonna that's the next phase of where we're heading now uh with automation which really starts to take out some of the some of the barriers to entry that we're seeing um and you can see that now with things like windows power automation which unbeknownst to almost all of us, we will have on our machines if you're using Windows. So I think it's heading in that direction specifically. Um, and I think that we're gonna start probably to start seeing uh, no and low code systems like yours come prepackaged with some, some very focused, narrow machine learning um, inbuilt and you will likely be able to start building out models in that direction soon. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't agree with more. I mean, I think that is that that's great insight. I think that's where we're headed. And I think, yeah, I think it's not the it's not too far away, as you said, where we will have more of these no code or low code uh, um, applications where where people would be automating things for themselves. Yeah, we, we see it. We see it a lot. I mean, we, we will if we can, we'll leverage them for clients where it, where it's applicable. Um, and where it's kind of where it's needed is something much more complex. Then obviously, you know, we'll we'll build something um, completely custom. But I, I think that the power will shift more to the the consumer, which is a good thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then uh, hopefully people will uh, hopefully people will be uh, efficiently minded and look for the simplest ways of doing things, and that we won't have uh, people automating complex, you know, making their automations more complex than the manual was. Yeah, absolutely. All they need to do is work out what the process is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, uh, did, yeah, listen, this was great, Daniel. So all of Daniel's information is going to be below this video, uh, all his contact information and the, the company. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you and Lolly do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we focus on two things primarily. We focus on process mapping and workshops, uh, and we focus on automation of business processes. Uh, you can... Uh, find our website at lolly.co, of course, which is beneath this video, as you mentioned. Uh, uh, and you can um, read my book that will be released in June on Amazon called Upgrade as well. Fantastic. Well, hopefully when your, your book gets released, um, you can come back and, and chat with us again and we, we can talk about the book. Uh, I would absolutely encourage people to check out the work that Dan and his company are doing because uh, you you may listen to this and think, oh, okay, we could, we could sit down and map out our processes, but it's, it's funny how much a, a, a third party and an independent set of eyes can help you because sometimes we're too close to things and we'll map out what looks like an absolutely perfectly efficient process because we don't include the, the parts that somebody else can spot. That's right, that's right. Well, look, thank you so much. I would love to come back on if the opportunity ever arises. Yeah, absolutely. No, come back, uh, come back after your book is released. Uh, thanks again, Daniel. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. We'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.